Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. I'm Ian. And today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about test pressing today, which is something that, uh, is somewhat popular in the uh, the vinyl community, at least the collectible the collectible community. side of it. But uh, yep, so that's what we're going to talk about today. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on that link down below and go check out the Vinyl Den Facebook group. It's kind of a cool place to continue the music conversation. Uh, you know, I'm sure everyone's probably tired of hearing me say that every week, but uh, yeah. check that out. There's also a couple of other links down there. There's one for the uh, Vinyl Den merch page, which if you haven't checked it out yet, there's some new uh, T-shirt styles on there as well as T-shirt designs. Hmm. Uh, so check that out. There's also a link for the uh, Vinyl Den Patreon page if you want to support the show. It's always greatly appreciated. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So if you don't know when uh, what a test pressing is, before they press, you know, whether, whatever amount of copies it is, whether it's, you know, 1,200, 5,000, 50,000 copies, they press, the, the, the pressing plant will press out a certain number, it's normally like five or 10 test pressings for the artist, for the label to check out and make sure that there's no sound issues, that everything's EQ'd correctly and, uh, you know, that they're overall happy with the, the way the album turned out, sonically speaking. Uh, and those are, have, have become pretty collectible mm -hmm. over the last, you know, several years. Mainly because of the, probably how few there are. Yeah, and, but that's the funny thing is, yeah, there for a while, there for a long time, there was a very small number of these test pressings available for albums. And then you're starting to see over the last couple of years, I think labels and bands know how collectible they are. So they're Start producing. Start releasing them? Well, they're, they're producing more of them. I saw, hmm. I don't know what album it was. It was within the last year or two. I want to say that there was like 100 test pressing copies that were hmm. made available. So I mean, I, I at that at that point, you're, that's just a limited album release. It's right. not really like a test pressing. Yeah, I, I don't know because it's like, I don't. Yeah, it's putting out, like you said, it's like it's a just another release. Yeah, yeah. I I don't own any test pressings because generally when I've seen them available online, they tend to go for quite a bit. I know SRC Vinyl. I think it was a year or two back for charity auctioned off. I don't know what it was like. It was probably a good thirty to forty different test pressings mm -hmm. that they had, um, you know, back in their where, wherever they press their albums at. But uh, they 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 auctioned them off on eBay. Like I said, it was off for for charity. But a lot of those things went for well over a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple that I bid on that I'd like to have, but I don't know. For me personally, if I'm going to spend over a hundred dollars on an album, it's not going to be. Uh, plain black album with a white label on a plain That's, white I was gonna say, it's, sleeve. You're not getting any artwork. You're not getting any labeling, any um, credit listings or anything. It's just a plain album. It's just a plain album. I can understand why people would want them as fans of an, a specific artist. Yeah. But beyond that, me personally, I don't see the appeal. I mean, I understand that. The appeal, like I said, from an artistic... For, the, for, 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 for a collectible side. Right, right. You know, because, right. like, if I was... Look, I'm going to tell you right now. If I was able to buy a test pressing... Of Dark Side of the Moon. Of Dark Side of the Moon, I'd probably spend a lot of money for that. Right. But that's a very specific instance. Right. Uh, you know, Blink-182 self-titled album, which was one of the SRC test pressings awesome. I did bid on. I think the highest bid I put on it was, like... $125, and it went for, I think it ended up selling that one in particular, ended going up for well over $200. Oh, wow. So as much as I love that album, it's probably one of my top five album, you know, favorite albums of all time. I wasn't going to spend that much money no. on a test pressing when I already have probably four copies of it sitting right. behind me. <laughs> Although the same is true with Dark Side of the Moon, but it just happens to be your favorite album. Yeah. So, so over the course of the last couple of years, I've, I've seen more postings on social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, of test pressings that people have. So that's kind of what I wanted to know was how prevalent is it in the vinyl community to collect test pressings? Or is it just a very small number of collectors that are looking for these? And is it a fairly new thing? Because I didn't never really even, I knew what a test pressing was, but I didn't realized that they were being sold, bought and sold on, say, Discogs until a few, few years ago, maybe five years ago. Yeah. But, you know, test pressings have been around for, you know, forever, for right. decades. I, as far as collectability goes, though, I had no idea. No, well, that's the thing is I don't know how prevalent they were. Like, 
how often they're actually being sold mm. until, like you said, within the last probably, you know, 15 years or so. Right. It, uh, at least the test processing I've seen, I haven't seen anything really older than, say, eight or ten years being posted online. But I don't know. It's just because uh, if you go on Discogs, there's a lot of different there's test processings on, on there. Yeah. And like I said, they go for quite a bit of money. But for me, you know, I understand it's... It's a collectible thing for a specific album. But like I said, you, you're not getting any, like you said, you're not getting any of the artwork, right. any of the other details that go along with the album. It's just a kind of a bare bones kind of thing. Uh, with that being said, though, I have seen some test pressings that come out with like, uh, I know that when MXPX released their self-titled album back in 2018, there they sold, I don't remember how many test pressings of that album they, they sold, whether it was like 10 or 15 different ones that they sold, but they came with, uh, an alternate cover on there, so that's a little okay. that's a little different. Yeah, again though, that is that just like a limited edition, more than. Well, but if it's like yeah, you're right. If it's like yeah. five or ten different copies though, right? Yeah. Okay. I can also see where we get to the point where, like like I said before, the these test processes become nothing more than like a marketing ploy, right? For bands and labels to kind of get more money out of the, out of their fans because, like I said, if you're releasing more than say I think more than like twenty twenty five copies. Then it's just yeah. another release of an album, right. and you're not getting a like like we said a lot of the bells and whistles, the cover, the artwork, the liner notes, all that kind of stuff that goes along with it. So I, just as long as it stays limited to what it originally has been for the last you know 40, 50 years, whatever it is, just like a small number of these uh, pre-release albums. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with it. Like I just don't want it to, like I said, turn into something where it's gouging the the, the artists are just gouging the, the fans. I'm, I'm curious: is there now because they're test pressings? There, theoretically, there's te there's pressings that have come out that have had uh, EQ problems or maybe minor defects in them. Do those go for more, or are they are they? I don't think those are sold. They're, they're just destroyed. Generally, from what I understand, the test pressings that are sold are the finished album. I know that uh, there was one band just recently i don't remember who it was but it was like an older like an 80s uh rap or early 90s rap artist that uh had a test pressing done and they didn't like the way it sounded mm -hmm. so they destroyed all the test pressings and had the album repressed, repressed. Right. so because i know they they because that came out because the artist came out and, and apologized to the fans who had pre-ordered this album thinking it was going to come out and now that there's an additional you know four month delay right. in this release they wanted to let fans know why it was being delayed so from, from what i understand when you buy those test pressings it's going to be whatever the finished album was right. because the artist or the band doesn't want a, a, a subpar version right. of their album being released well i was just thinking that might increase the collectability of it you know it's kind of like um mispressed um coins and stuff where you know, like heads is on both sides yeah. or, and there are mi there are mispressings on on standard albums mm -hmm. that get released that you know sometimes increase the value sometimes they don't so i mean i, I guess that there is something out there that is a, a mispress or something that didn't get mass released because of the way it sounds mm -hmm. You know, it might be, it might increase the value, it might not. I, I'm right. not really sure. Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show. I don't know, drop us a comment down below. Let us know what you guys think of test pressings. Is it something that you really think is a, you know, a great collector's piece? Or is it just something that you kind of pass over? Because, like I said before, I've got, you know, four or five copies right. of the same album. So, I don't know, let us know what you guys think. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give these the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And uh, that's about it. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace.